Welcome back to another look here with me, Lieutenant Colonel Clarence Jamison. Before the break, we were talking about the fact that you had gotten your pilot's license at the University of Chicago. Then you had signed up for the 99th Pursuit Squadron to become a fighter pilot. And you're waiting and you're waiting to get the nod, but you didn't get the nod. So what did you do at that point? Well, I had to make a decision as to whether to sign up for the next semester course or get accepted into the Army Air Corps. And I had passed the physical and I didn't hear anything. So I decided to write a letter to Eleanor Roosevelt. First lady at the time. First lady. And of course, I never received a direct response from her, but within five weeks of sending the letter, I received a call to report to the old post office in Chicago to be inducted as an Army, Aviation, Army Air Force aviation cadet and uh, I did that and was, was accepted and transferred down to Tuskegee to begin the training for the, with the 99th Pursuit Squadron. So you, you, were, you were telling me that uh, you wrote the letter, you never kept a copy of it, but you are convinced that that, that letter had some pull. It, it really did make a difference. Yes, I'm, I'm certain that it, it did. And I had expected to be one of the first black pilots accepted into the Army Air Corps. And actually, I ended up being in the second class. The first class had about 13 men initially, and only five finished. My class, we started with 13 and only three of us finished. Myself, Charlie Dryden from New York, and uh, Sidney Britz, a, a friend of mine from Cleveland. So it was just three. And then a, a class was graduating about every five or six weeks. Then uh, I, I was in the second class, the three finished. The third class, four finished. So that left five, three, and four. We're trying to get about almost 30, 28 pilots. We're trying to attain at least 28 pilots, which was required to form a fighter squadron. And so it took about five or six classes to get that many pilots for the initial 99th Pursuit Squadron. We we trained at Tuskegee for well over a year, and we were expecting to get called overseas at any time. But apparently, the Army was having difficulty finding some place where to, where to send us. April 43, we landed in Casablanca, North Africa, in, in uh, Morocco. And, uh, it was there in Casablanca that we got our first aircraft and uh, we moved across North Africa and ended up we were from Morocco to Algeria to Tunis yeah. and, uh, and that's where we ended up flying our first missions in combat and so I was uh, selected with three other fellows to fly with this uh, white fighter group uh, and here I was I was a, a captain at the time so we went to the briefing with the, uh, the the white group and this white lieutenant he was very cordial they said okay you just get on my wing and follow me and we're going to dive bomb this little island of Pantheleria. And I said, no, to me, no problem. I, I, I practiced doing all these things and uh, I, I had no, uh, uh, the, the four of us who were 
all four of us, each each one of us, four black piles, was attached to a uh, white pilot with the, the uh, 33rd Fighter Group. And uh, I remember this little lieutenant, he said, well, just get on my wing, and when I go down, he, he just go down so with me, follow me down. So I guess I misunderstood him. He thought that he expected me to break off, file down and trail the first time, one, two, three. Well, I was just, we did, you used to do this stuff in formation. So when he went down, I was sitting right there with him. <laughs> we went down to the desert, and when he let his bomb in, I let my bomb in. <laughs> Not quite the way that it was expected, but. <laughs> and, and when he pulled up, he looked and saw me sitting right there, and he had a grin on his face. He said, right on. But uh, it was, it was, it was, they, they had a lot of respect for us. They knew we were damn good pilots. We could fly. I had over 300 eyes, but I had as much flying time in that P-40 at the time as he had. And he had been in combat. So we were really overtrained, really, because we had sat back at Tuskegee for over a year. Waiting. To be tall. So, uh, I, I I just took that P forty. I could do everything in that thing, you know. And you could you could maneuver it. Yes, it, it was, and that's where most all of us in the night we were we were darn good pilots. So. I, you, your your experience is, is just is, is just really interesting. Like I said, you're living history. We're gonna talk more about when we come back about uh, Mr. Jameson being a, a flight instructor in Indiana and some of the things that uh, he dealt with there. Stay with us. More to come on Lieutenant Colonel Clarence Jameson. <laughs>